Where Polish food and history meet, there's a milk bar. All the way from their start as a meeting point for artists and intelligentsia at the turn of the century, throughout the tumultuous 20th century and their boom and fame during the Polish People's Republic, all the way to their role in gentrification talks of today. With their unique yet simple concept, reasonable prices and a taste of nostalgia, Bary Mleczne are once again popular with both locals and tourists. Today, we're going to take you to Warsaw, where milk bars started, and tell you everything you need to know. What they are, where they came from, why they became popular, and make sure that you can enjoy them like a local the next time you visit Warsaw with J-Way Travel. A lot of press about milk bars suggests that they are an invention of the communist times. And while they definitely had their boom during the Polish People's Republic era, the origin of milk bars goes back to the turn of the century. The first one was opened on the corner of Nowy Świat and Aleje Jerozolimskie in 1896 by Stanisław Drzewski, an inventive dairy farmer. Mleczarnia Natschwijanska offered a variety of drinks together with milk or egg-based dishes. This original milk bar was famous for its excellent white coffee, cream butter, always fresh bread and curdled milk that could be cut with a knife. This helped attract a wide variety of artists, theater folk, poets and young Polish bohemians. Just like how it was with cafes in Vienna or Paris, in Warsaw, milk bars were the place where culture was happening at the turn of the century. Soon, the popularity of milk bars spread throughout the country. The building of Mleczarnia Nadzwidzanska was unfortunately torn down in the 1920s to make space for the National Development Bank. But we can visit another part of milk bars history just a five minute walk away from here. After the First World War, rising food prices caused the authorities to regulate everything from ingredients used to the amount of meals distributed per person. The goal was to provide access to nutritious food to as many people as possible. This paved the way for the milk bar boom during the communist era of the Polish People's Republic. As normal restaurants were a rarity under communism, milk bars were often the only places to eat out. One of the milk bars opened during this time was Bar Familena. While many milk bars went through different stages of redesign over the last few decades, Bar Familini retains its original interior and atmosphere. While the food may not be as visually impressive as in neighboring restaurants, the taste and homemade quality make up for it. Delicious, but how do milk bars work? What's the concept? The basic concept of a milk bar is actually defined by Polish law, so I will borrow the rough definition. It is a self-service business selling dairy-based meals and non-alcoholic drinks to the masses. This definition exists because to this day, some milk bars are subsidized by the government. That helps keep the prices low and affordable to everyone. On your visit to a bar mlechne, you will encounter these three key items. The menu board, the cash register and the window. A good general tip is to always observe what others do since every milk bar is slightly different. The menu board is the whole menu, showing everything the milk bar offers. It might be overwhelming at first, but don't worry. It is separated into categories such as breakfast, drinks, dough-based dishes, meat dishes, salads and others. We will try to help you simplify your choice and decode the menu board in a few minutes. Just note that milk bars usually don't have table menus, so the board is your only friend in figuring out what you want to eat. If the thing you want does not have a price next to it, it is most likely not available on that day. You can take your time at the menu and figure out what you want. Do not rush this step of the process. The next step would be to tell the person at the cash register what you want to order. These places are often old school and the staff won't speak much English especially if you go for the truly local experience. So, please be patient and understand that you're the guest here. But in our experience, the staff, though maybe not the most cheerful, are always helpful and efficient. After you've paid for your food, you may have to deliver one of your receipts to the window. Behind the window is where the magic happens, and you can often catch a glimpse of some boiling and sizzling. When the window receives your order, they start working on it. 
Sometimes, your entire order will be prepared at once. Most often though, individual parts of your order will be announced separately. That means you have to pay attention and make sure you collect everything you ordered while not accidentally taking other people's food. As you can see, milk bars are fully self-service. That also means that you have to clear away your own dishes at the end. Don't forget to bring your dishes and cutlery to the designated place before you leave the milk bar. But let's get to the most important part. What should you order? We recommend starting with a soup, a traditional Polish starter. Our topics would be a tomato soup, or one of the more traditional soups like żurek made of fermented rye and meat, or red barszcz, a ruby red broth made of pickled beetroots. As far as mains go, there are many to choose from. What you shouldn't miss if you're in the mood for a meat dish is kotlet, prepared in many variations such as simple schnitzel or meatloaf. Or you can try a cabbage roll stuffed with meat, usually served with sauce. A dish you shouldn't leave Poland without trying is obviously a plate of pierogi, typical Polish dumplings. They come with a plethora of fillings and we have yet to taste a version that wouldn't be absolutely delicious. Dumplings in Poland come in many different shapes and sizes, such as these lazy dumplings served simply with butter and sugar. Another great option for a sweet meal or as a breakfast option are pancakes. Try them out with jam and cream, we promise you won't regret it. On the side of your main, order a simple surovka, an easy salad made of grated vegetables. It adds color and vitamins to your table. For drinks, you can opt for a kompot, a sweet beverage made of boiled fruit, or put the milk in your milk bar experience and have a glass of sour milk or hot chocolate. Simple drinks like water, tea or black coffee are usually also on the menu. And lastly, don't be shy and try some dessert. There are several types of jelly you can try or just play it safe and try some Polish cheesecake. One of the wonderful things about milk bars is that their prices are kept low by regulation. Milk bars, if qualified, receive government subsidies for the ingredients and have to comply with regulations regarding the preparation of the dishes as well as a cap on maximum possible profit margin. That's why you can enjoy a lovely plate of pierogi for around 10 zlotys, which is less than 3 bucks and a little over 2 euros. Fun fact, even if meat dishes won't set you back much more than the vegetarian ones, they are not subsidized by the government. Some milk bars are relics of the old times. Under communism, customer experience and service wasn't the most important thing on people's minds. That's why people might have negative memories of milk bars. But we think the food makes up for it. Even if the cups were chipped, cutlery cheap, decoration non-existent, and the service left something to be desired, people still feel nostalgic for these places. Because despite everything, the food is great. Solid, nutritious, and Polish. It's always homemade. It has to be. After the fall of communism, Western capitalism arrived in Poland and many milk bars went out of business. But now, the taste for nostalgia and the need for affordable nutrition are back. Bari Mleczne still have their place in the conversations of today. To see that, look no further than Bar Prasowe. Roughly translated to press bar, because it used to feed journalists from nearby offices, Bar Prasowe used to be the last bastion of affordable eating in Warsaw's busy downtown. After its owner retired, a battle for the city-owned space began. To make a long story short, the city officials wanted something more global and elegant. Rosovians disagreed and protested, wanting to keep a cheap eatery in the district. Discussions about city planning and gentrification heated the Polish public space. The situation escalated in 2011, when local activists occupied the space and distributed meals. The conclusion to that story is all around me. The city had to give up and announce a public tender for the space. Par Prasove is once more. With the tumultuous events of the past few years shaking the gastronomy sector, we can surely say that the history of milk bars is still being written. But for now, we highly recommend visiting one of these places. While this video focused on the milk bars of Warsaw, they can be found all over the country. So the next time you visit Poland with J-Ray Travel, you know where to go for a hearty, homemade meal. Which one would you like to try the most? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Cześć!